Whirlpool Corporation's stock ticker WHR is currently trading at $147.84. Year to date, they are up 2.8%, but if we zoom out, they are actually down 27%. They recently released their earnings where they met expectations on the top line with a revenue of 4.92 billion and they beat on the bottom line with 60 cents. The market actually liked what they saw and you can see after the earnings was released end of January, the stock was actually going up again. Then the gas stove controversy heated up again and you can see the stock fell again and again and again. The drop was also a bit surprising since Whirlpool actually gave quite strong guidance. But let's jump into our stock screener to see whether or not we can find the fair value of Whirlpool and decide whether or not it could be a good entry point into the stock. And as you can see here, we have punched in the ticker WSR for Whirlpool and everything automatically loads. The earnings per share are a bit messed up, so I will correct that later. But you can see the PE non-gap fall ratio is 8, which is in line with the 5-year average. It offers a pretty hefty dividend yield of 4.7%, which is $7 at the time of recording, and a healthy payout ratio below 60%. The analyst target price is 150, so roughly in line with where we are at now. The analyst target growth is minus 11% for the next five years, but some of my favorite metrics is the EPS growth to be above 10%, and we are roughly at 20, and also the return on equity being above 15, and it's at 16. One thing I do think is a bit of a red flag here is the net debt to editor. Even though I said below for 3.1 is a bit high, especially for a company that is so where the capital is so driven by debt. And if we jump into the dividend data, you can see here that, as mentioned, the dividend yield is currently 4.7. And over the last couple of years, they have actually raised the dividend quite a lot. You can see they had some pretty bad years in around 2018, 19 and 20 and then it came really after doing COVID and afterwards. So when we bundle everything together here you can see that the five-year dividend growth rate is around 10% and the 10-year dividend growth rate is 13%. And if we come down here if we just look at the dividend yield as mentioned the PE non-gap fall ratio was in line and the five-year dividend yield where the yield is now currently above the five-year average also, if you look over here, you can see on the dividend alone, it could indicate that there's a 30% discount to be had at the time of recording. Coming down once again here to the rate of return, you can see the Whirlpool has actually outperformed the index of S&P 500 over time. It During COVID, it dropped down and matched, and then it actually outperformed again, and now we are roughly at the same level. But jumping into our valuation models, we do have six variation models, the first one being Graham's revised variation model, where we have overridden the EBS to the actual EBS coming from the financial statements. And even though we take the average yield of triple corporate bonds and the current yield is actually the same around 4.4, due to the negative growth, obviously we do arrive at an intrinsic value of minus 92. So I will discard this one. For the discount cash flow model, we do take the free cash flows from the different years. We do average them together, apply a growth rate. We have all the future free cash flow applied into the future with that growth rate. And then we uh, discount them back using our discount rate to a present value. Sum all this together, plus the cash and cash equivalents minus the total debt. Then we arrive at an equity value, which gives us a fair value of $402. Next one is the dividend discount model. As you quickly can see here, since the growth rate is so high and the weight of capital, uh, weighted average cost of capital from Whirlpool is so low, the intrinsic value actually gets to be negative. So again, I'll discard this one. Also for the multiples valuation, since so many of the competitors are at negative EPS, I'll also jump over this one. So the next one is actually the free cash flow valuation, where we have the price to free cash flow ratio combined with a free cash flow per share. We arrive at an intrinsic value of one hundred and ninety-five dollars. Last one, Peter Lynch model again, negative growth rates, so that one won't produce an intrinsic value. So before we jump into the summary, thank you so much for watching, and if you've come so far, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Let's jump into the summary where we do have our different valuation models here that gets summed together. Since the Graham's revised variation model is negative, I will obviously exclude that. The discount cash flow was at 402 and they have the free cash flow at $194. It gives us an average intrinsic value of just shy of $300. At the current price of 147, it could indicate that there was an average discount of 50%. So even though we put in maybe a 
really high margin of safety for 50% we arrive an acceptable buy price at the current price. I do think there are too many variables unknown for this stock right now to be able to go further with it, even though the model says that it could be a potentially a good buy because the intrinsic value is so high. So if you want to proceed, then do so at your own leisure. Obviously, check out the company and make a decision for yourself before it. I will definitely wait a bit longer before looking closer at Whirlpool. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.